Greetings and welcome to step 18 of our Awakening in 30 Steps. Today's contemplation is on repaying the kindness of mother beings based on the previous sense of gratitude. So just to reiterate, we are developing the mental muscles or capacity for compassion, not the manby pamby compassion that is short-lived, but the industrial strength compassion. We started this series of contemplations, of course, with our balancing social reactivity. If you recall in that step, we did some work around uh, making our love towards our near and dear ones much more unconditional, making our compassion uh, universal, in including the most challenging and difficult ones. As difficult as that may sound, it's required if we recognize we are all embedded in infinity. There is no escape our social relations, and so we have to try to upgrade and improve the way that we interact. And then, of course, all the countless stranger, strangers, the nameless, faceless ones, how do we make them go three-dimensional and give, breathe life into them? This is done by replacing disinterest with genuine interest. From that step, we then looked nakedly and clearly and honestly at the cosmology of our infinite interrelatedness and there recognized at one time or another each and every sentient life, every sentient creature passing into the six realms of existence from, from birth to death and rebirth into various forms they have at least once occupied the role of the kind near and dear mother. And then from there we went into the reflection that they all have been infinitely kind. Not kind in the immediate quid pro quo, but kind in the sense of putting into the stream the currency of their blood, sweat, and tears and energy to make our lives possible. So I hope you enjoyed the last meditation on the blueberry or the button or the whatever in your immediate vicinity and that it generated a sense of visceral gratitude for just all the things we take for granted, everything in our life, from our body to our breath to our mind and all of its contents are possible, are made possible by the kindness of living beings. Once we have that sense of tremendous gratitude, then comes step 18, the wish to repay that kindness. So here the word repay is a very loaded word. What we don't want to do is reinforce our cultural conditioning about the kind of give to get mentality. Oh, I only get I only give once I receive. Uh, then it's sort of contaminated in my estimation and one of the ways that I have, you know, like to think about this is if you're anything like me and you've had this experience of going out uh, to dinner or to lunch with a number of different people, you know, a group of six, let's say, and uh, everybody orders what they want and you're gobbling down and then comes the moment <laughs> when you have to pay the bill. And what, what I've seen people do uh, is that they pull out their calculator <laughs> and they go down to the decimal point of taking their share or making it divided equally between six parts. And I just think one of the contemplations here is to just really recognize what's going on there. And then to revisit the, 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 the idea that in other cultures it's not done that way when you go out to dinner or lunch. In fact, it's a great honor for you to take the entire uh, sum of the dinner on and, and to have the privilege and the honor to buy dinner for everybody. And so let's just take a nanosecond to think about what goes into those kinds of moments where we're kind of making sure everybody's got an equal share and everybody's contributed and how much did I pay and how much did you pay and is there enough? And it's like there's like loaded levels of scarcity and what will happen and maybe guilt and maybe shame and fear. And we don't want to do that in this contemplation. We want to imagine, begin to even at the conceptual level, imagine what it would be like to come from a place of abundance and trust and love. 
In other words, that you have so much gratitude and you also have the recognition that you have so much to give that there wouldn't be any limits or shortages or quotas on your giving. No quotas. No quotas on your giving that you take time in the past reflection. Step 17 to really, really analyze just how gracious people have been. And you do a thorough job at that. Then you start to re recognize this, that in all likelihood, you have been the recipient of much more than you have given. You have been the recipient than much more than you have given. And now it's time. Now it's time to put in. But it's not like you put your hand in your pocket and you only have spare change. It's like you also have to see you have a tremendous amount of energy to give, to give back. You feel so grateful and you feel like you have something to offer and then you give it back. You, you feel the joy of giving, the joy of giving, not the burden, not the obligation, not the cross-contaminated instincts of, well, if I don't, what will happen? But the joy, the gratitude and the joy of giving back. And one way I think about this, I mean, the most obvious example, because sometimes it's important with these trainings to, to have actual practical examples. Of course, my teacher, Gisha Tenzin Zopa, is the first one that comes to my mind because I have witnessed him on pilgrimage, for example, where I have been, as the pilgrimage tour leader, I have been concerned about how uh, other people might uh, ask too much of his time. You know, so I've developed like schedule charts for the interview with the, with the master and, and making sure like, you know, make sure, <laughs> make sure I'm like the, 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 um, the watch guard of his time silly me of course silly me uh, and instead what ends up happening is with a tour of 30 students i watched geshe tenzin Zopa give of his time so generously and without tiring without tiring and the quality the quality and the quantity of his giving of his attention and I remember after a week that we spent in Copan with 30-some students in Gishila, that in my, in, my, in my speaking privately with each student who had actually found time with Gishila, they all reported this. The experience of receiving from him and his counsel and his advice and his witnessing everything and more than they could have imagined. That they received from him everything and more than they could have ever imagined. And I think, man, 30 students all longing and coming with traumas and coming with queries and coming with problems, a steady stream of need. And in my impoverished Outlook. I was thinking, oh, we got to micromanage this because we don't want to overwhelm Geshe-la, and how could he possibly? And, and yet, what abundance, what abundance, what an immense well to draw on to quench the thirst of living beings. So this is my example of what it's like to recognize all mother beings and recognize their kindness and then want to repay that kindness. And what, an, what a joy, what a joy it is to share. What a joy it is to, is to give of oneself when one has the recognition that there, there really are no limits. Now, of course, all of us feel a little tired and crouchy and crampy, and so then we should respect those limits. But, but in this training, in this training, in this incremental bench pressing of the heart, 
this is the direction. How do you get to be a Geshe La, a Geshe Tenzin Zopa who has a limitless capacity, an endless bounty, a bottomless well, and such joy in bringing up the buckets of water to quench the thirst of living beings? Well, you have to stretch yourself a little bit. You have to stretch yourself a little bit. So maybe the next time you sit down and the bill comes, <laughs> You check your mind about the hesitation, oh, I couldn't possibly pay for this. But then what if you lived from the point of view of the kindness of living beings and what an honor it is to make them happy even with just the taking of the bill at the meal. That would Think about their reaction. Oh, you'd like to buy me lunch? It starts like that. It starts like moments like that. And if, and if it's not possible, and if it's too hard in the moment, at least observe the story making apparatus that makes it feel like it's impossible look into that story of how there's fear and scarcity and shame blocking blocking make, making an obstacle in the stream and in the circuitry of the river or flow of kindness Reflection 18 on our awakening in 30 steps. All best wishes.